Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We're now going to run you through your handover on the T-Cross Life. This particular car has no options, so depending on what options you went for on your vehicle, you may find that um, you might have some extras. Let's get into it. This is the car's key. You'll notice that there's three buttons on there. One for lock, patch release, and unlock. There's also a jackknife key if you need to get into the door. On the door handle, this cap just here actually comes off. And then that's how you can actually get in if your battery on the key goes flat. Your fuel cap is located on the driver's side. Now, if the car's locked, you won't be able to open it because this actually works off a push release. If you unlock the car with the key, you'll be able to open it up. To close, just push it back in. To open up the tailgate, unlock the car with the key, and then there's a button just under the badge here. Just push that in, and you're inside. Now, inside the, the boot, you do get these triangles that sit up on either side. What they're used for is if you actually lift up the cover, the triangles will actually hold that in place so that you can access your spare and your tools with it. The other option that you have too, you'll see where the divide sits now that it's level. If you need extra depth, what you can actually do is drop it down the lower height just like so if you ever need to access the engine bay just on the passenger side you have your lever there that just pulls towards you and that will release it then to open up the bonnet the little lever it's actually just under here on the bottom you slide it to the side and then it comes up like so Inside your engine bay, things that you need to know of, the basics. If you need to top up your oil, you do it through here. If you want to check your oil, you've got your dipstick there as well. And then to the passenger side, through here, you've got your top up for your, your wipers for the windscreen. If you want to fold the second row down, if you have a look inside here, up on top of the seat, you got this lever. You can just pull that, and that'll allow you to bring the seat forward, like so. Now, inside the car, in the driver's position, we'll just start on the door. On the door trim, you've got your buttons for your electric windows. This button here will lock out people from winding down the windows. Up here, you've got your controls for your side mirrors too. So if you want to adjust the left mirror, turn it to L, and then just move it around like a joystick. If you want to adjust the right mirror, just turn it to the R. Now, below here, you've got your controls for your headlights. You'll notice that the car, as standard, comes with dusk sensing headlights. Hence why it's set to auto. You can turn them off if you choose to. You've got parking lights. You've also got your manual mode for your headlights. If you want to engage your fog lights, just pull the button outwards towards you. You'll also notice as well that on this side here, you've got manual adjustment for where your headlights can sit in front of you on the road. So for example, if you've got some gear in the back of the car and the back of the car starts to bottom out a bit, you can adjust where the headlights sit in front of you just to make sure that you've still got vision while driving at night. Steering wheel, we've got buttons that are located on the right side. So this button here is for your voice control, which works inside of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It does not work outside of that. You've also got arrow buttons located up and down, left and right. 
There's also an OK button as well. That actually changes what's displayed in your digital screen. So for example, we're in the driving data menu at the moment. So if I push like say right, you can go from that screen to your assist systems, to your audio, your telephone, your vehicle status. For example, if you're in driving data, you've got the digital speedo there at the moment. If you push up or down, you can go between your digital speedo to other items as well. It really just depends uh, on yourself, you as the driver, what you want to see displayed there. The view button will take you back between the last two screens that you had activated, like so. And then below there, you've got your buttons for your track selection or your radio station selection as well. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, you've got your buttons here for the cruise control. So you've got on and off. You have set and resume. You also have increase of increments plus 10, minus 10. Resin set also act as plus 1 and minus 1. You've got a button there to cancel it as well. This button here, if you push it in, will actually give you a quick reference guide to your safety systems where you can either um, turn off or turn on, or you can change between um, your speed adjustment or the limiter for the cruise control. If you push the button in again, the menu will just disappear. One thing that I will say, if you've got the driver assistance package, some of these controls here can look a little bit different you know, because you'll have adaptive cruise control, um, which it'll look very similar, but yeah, it might just look a little bit different. And then below there, you've got your volume control for uh, your music as well. Now on the steering column, we've got two sticks. This stick shows us our uh, wipers. Now you do get automatic wipers. So you just need to flick it up into the first lock position to engage that. If you look to the left side, you've got your indicators. So left indicate, right indicate. And you've got high beams as well. So manual mode for the high beams. You'll know because the logo will come up in the dash. Or you've just got set for your high beams as well, just by pushing the stick forward if you need to. Handbrakes located around the center console. With our gear stick, there's a few different options there for what it can be in. Just make sure that when you're changing gear that your foot's on the brake. When you adjust it from, say, park to reverse, neutral and drive, like so. There is also a manual mode as well. So if you bring it down into drive and then push to the right, you can then upshift by tapping up or downshift by tapping backwards. You also get two ports for USB connectivity. These are super important because with one of them, you can use your App Connect with your Apple CarPlay and your Android Auto. You get as well, the bit hard to see with the lighting, but this mat just here. So if you leave your phone there, as long as it's um, compatible, uh, you've got wireless charging as well. So these controls here show our air conditioning. So you've got cooling and heating, fan power, and where the airflow is going to. You've also got rear demister. You've got recirculation of air. And you've also got the AC button as well. Above the air conditioning controls, you've got your hazard light. You've got your, bu your button that turns on your park assist. So if you engage that, you'll notice it on your screen, the park pilot screen comes up. So from a sense of view, front and rear, you can actually detect what's close. Being that we've got our little sale sign at the front of the car just there, you'll notice that if we have a look back at the screen, there's a little white symbol that comes up just here. That's your sensor telling you that you've parked close to something. This button here is your idle stop start technology. Now, as standard, your car, when you pull up to like a set of lights and stop, the engine will cut out to save on emissions. Okay. Now, if you don't like the car doing that, you can disable it. Just push the button so it glows and you'll be notified in the dash as well. Now, inside the glove box, you do have 
a little unit here that allows for CD players and CDs, I should say. And there's also a slot for an SD card as well. Up in the roof, you have your lights for the interior. Now with the car's head unit, or center screen if you will, um, there's quite a few buttons that are located on both the left and also the right hand side of it. The actual screen itself is also a touch screen. So let's just say for example, if we go back to menu, you can actually just tap on one of the buttons accordingly. Now starting with the radio, so you'll notice that we've got some presets located already between buttons one to six. If you wanted to change your presets, what you can do, if you click on station list, and let's just say you wanted to have, let's just say this one as your preset for number one, tune into it and then just push and hold the button. Like so. You've also got extra options that come up down the bottom. So you can change the bandwidth, you can manually tune in, and then there's also a settings option. I suggest that where it says here, um, arrow buttons on your steering wheel, instead of it running through the station list, I'd have it run through your pre-list, or your preset list, I should say, just to make it easier. Next, we have media. Now, in media, this is how you can play music into the car. There's quite a few options there. With App Connect, this is how you can access your Apple CarPlay and your Android Auto, okay? Just make sure though that it is plugged in via USB. If you have a look on our YouTube channel, we do actually have separate guides on how to use those systems. In regards to connecting your telephone, if you click here, it will come up with find VWBT, then a set of numbers. Uh, the set of numbers is actually the last four numbers to your VIN number for the car. And if you have a look at the next section, I'll show you how to do it on your phone. Once your phone's connected, the screen will change to this system here. So you can actually save speed dials for these buttons up the top there on the top right. You've also got options that come up down the bottom here as well. So you can still dial a number. You've also got the uh, pre-programmed uh, breakdown number as well for the roadside assist if required. You've got all your contacts down here, your call history as well. And then there's also a settings option where you can further customize your user profile. In regards to your sound options, if you click on here, it does give you a few choices there. Now, the last thing we're gonna show you in the video is if we click on vehicle here, this sort of menu acts as sort of two different options, I guess. So with selection, if you click on here, this can change the screen between all your different sort of driving data options that are available. If you click on settings here, this is where you can actually further personalize a lot of the car stuff. Now we won't run through all of the menus, but I'll run through the majority of them, the main ones. Uh, first one we'll look at is the tires. Now the car has its own tire pressure loss indicator and it works off the rolling diameter. So if the car detects that the rolling diameter in the wheels have changed, because the tires are starting to get flat, you'll get a warning that comes up on the dash. So you'll know to go and pump up the tires. Once you've pumped up the tires, you'll just need to come back in and just into this menu and push set, just to reset them so you don't get any extra warnings. Now in light, so you've got some options here for your headlights and also your instrument and switch lighting too. You might want to tick the box that says automatic headlight control in rain they can turn on as soon as it starts. Next, we have the driver assistance. So this is where you can play around with the autonomous emergency braking and also the lane assist and also the driver alert system. You'll notice that with the lane assistant, if you're starting to veer out of your lane, the steering wheel will actually vibrate if you've got that box ticked. Next, there. we have parking and maneuvering. 
So this is where you can change the volume and the sound of the sensors. And you've also got your maneuver braking safety system as well. Just make sure that one's So too. next we have mirrors and wipers. Now you'll notice that because we're in the life with no options, even though it says mirrors and wiper settings, we've only got access to change some of the wiper features. If you purchased um, one of the packs, you might find that you might get additional features in here. But being that we're in the standard model, this is all you'll see. And then just make sure that you've got the appropriate boxes ticked for your profile. In and closing. Now, with the essential locking, you can choose for it to be all doors or single door or vehicle side. Convenience opening allows you with the key to wind down and wind up all the windows if you're outside of the car. So with the convenience opening feature, you'll notice that all the windows are up at the moment. So if I actually hold down the unlock button, you can drop them down. That helps in summertime if you wish to air the car out. Now it does work the opposite way as well. So again, with the key, if you just hold the lock button down, you can wind them all up. Cluster. Now, this menu here, so with your multi-function display or the digital screen that sits there in the dash, you can actually choose in the driving data what screens are visible or not visible. You can also reset your since start and also your long-term uh, driving data for the fuel economy. Now, if you ever need to change or update the time and date this is where we do it just make sure that you've got the correct time zone selected because if you don't it can blow things out you can also select 12 or 24 hour time also date as well and also the format of the date this box up here allows you to change between daylight savings time well, if we click on service, so this screen here will let you know what you've got left to go on before the car's due for a service. Now, it does work on either kilometres or time. So, service intervals are every 15,000 kilometres or every 12 months, whichever comes first. You'll notice that this one's already ticked down a little bit too because the service department's had to play around with it. When you get to about 1,500 kilometres, you'll actually get a warning that comes up in the in the dash to let you know that you need to book in thank you everybody for taking the time to watch the video we hope you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe for future content and we'll see you on the next one